Now, Winnie Mandela, famous anti-apartheid activist and wife of Nelson Mandela, died Monday after an extended illness. And like many of you out there, I was unsure how to feel. On one hand, she was married to the human rights icon from 1958 until their divorce in 1996. For 27 years of their marriage, Nelson was imprisoned by the minority white apartheid regime for his activism, and Winnie worked tirelessly to keep his ideals alive and give the anti-apartheid movement one of its most recognizable faces. She campaigned to end the system of race-based oppression, and for that, she too was imprisoned and tortured. She faced constant security threats during her time as an activist, police raids on her home as often as four times a day. She was even banned from leaving her home at night and was later restricted from leaving her neighborhood in the Soweto township of Johannesburg. Upon Nelson Mandela's release and the end of apartheid, Winnie went on to become a member of parliament and served as deputy minister of arts and culture. On the other hand, however, her bodyguard told South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Committee in 1997 that he beat, tortured, and ultimately killed people at her request. Mandela denied the allegations, but later apologized to the families of two of the victims. Also in 2003, she was sentenced to four years in prison for dozens of, um, for theft and bank fraud charges when a judge ruled that she profited from loans to poor people who couldn't get them without a letter from her. Sinner or saint? Winnie Mandela does deserve credit for helping bring an end to the brutal, systematic oppression that plagues South Africa. Many people have better futures as a result of it. But because of her later years, I find it important to also remember the victims of her crimes and to always place principles above personalities. Our right, room on Facebook Live.